Hey friends, I mentioned later in this video that uh, it will be very easy to make a script in ChatGPT that will automate a lot of the steps. Uh, I actually tried it and it did not take a couple of minutes, it took a couple of days, but still it really did work. And uh, you can download this script, I haven't turned it into an add-on yet because I don't know how, I'm not a programmer. I guess you can download it from GitHub. When you extract it, you'll find the script and the manual. So here's a little bit of explanation. The way you can load a script in Blender is you just open it, copy paste it, and then here create a new text in the text editor. Or you can just open the text file here. Paste it, so this is all the code. And then you can run it. And as long as there's no error message, it seems to have worked. So now if you check the option panel with N, there are two things, add some hooks and remove hooks. And if you have your shirt selected and click on add some hooks, it will do everything. Set up the hooks, the vertex group, cloth sim and the pin group and self collisions and it will turn off gravity. So now when I play this, I can just have some fun with this, add some faults. And when you're happy with that, you go to the remove hooks panel. You can use the middle mouse button to scroll through the uh, option panels here. And there's a remove hooks button, but very important. You need to select the shirt again and then click remove hooks. Okay, now it has removed the vertex group, the clouds modifier, and it empties the hooks, and you just have a mesh. I am going to add a asset browser and use a base mesh that I have downloaded from the uh, Blender Studio. And in fact, it, this is going to be a base mesh that is going to be included with Blender in the future. In the asset browser, they are going to add some base meshes. But um, for now, you have to download them manually. I'll put the link in the description. And uh, this is a linked duplicate, I think. So let me just press Control A and make instances real. Otherwise, we cannot do anything to the mesh and delete this empty so now we have a mesh that's great let me shade this fella smooth um and let me make a shirt for him in wireframe mode deselect everything go to circle select and just uh, select some stuff on one side Back to solid mode. You can activate circle select by pressing C. And then just keep adding more to it and right click when you're done with it. Otherwise you cannot move around. Okay. If you want to remove stuff with circle select, you just have to hold shift while using it. Okay, that looks good on one side. So now we're going to select mirror. That mirrors the selection, but if you click extend, then it will mirror it and add it to the current selection. And we can just uh, duplicate that with Shift D and then press Alt S to scale it up. Make sure you don't have auto merge vertices turned on because then it will just uh, merge it immediately after we're getting it. So now we have a little bit of a gap and we can separate the shirt pressing P and using separate by selection. So if we're going to object mode now, we have a shirt and his body. Uh, let me make that a little bit more clear by turning on random. I think for the simulation, we probably need a little bit more uh, geometry so let me add a subdiv modifier and apply it immediately 
this should be enough, I think. It's also important with Claude Sims that you don't go too far with the geometry in the beginning. Now, one, one big problem is it's uh, it's real world scale. It's about the average human male size. And um, logically, you would expect that that's good if you add a simulation. Here, I'm adding collision to the base mesh, and then I'm adding cloth. Whoops. And a cloth modifier. Look, if we simulate this now, it really won't look good because it's too small. So if we select all this and press S10 and enter, it's 10 times too big now. It's an 18 meters tall dude. But press the spacebar and play the simulation. You'll see that the simulation works pretty good now. I recommend if your simulations don't look good, just scale them up. That was just for a demonstration. Let me just remove this for now. And first we are going to add some hooks because you cannot just grab a cloth like you could in Marvelous Designer, for example. You have to add some hooks that uh, Blender can uh, hold on to. And of course I can add these on, on both sides, but for the demonstration now, I'll just uh, add them on the front. I think that's good. And we will add this to a vertex group and click assign. If I deselect everything now by pressing select, you can see everything that you have in that vertex group, which is important because we have to add hooks by selecting one vertex, pressing control H, hook to new object. But then I don't remember <laughs> exactly which vertex I had selected, so I have to use this button. There they are to add all the other hooks. And you cannot add them all at the same time because then it will just put one hook somewhere in the median point of those selected vertices. So we just have to do this in this stupid way. I guess you could very easily add a uh, create a uh, script that adds some random hooks, maybe in chat GTP, just ask it to do just that. and. Uh, then you don't have to do it like this. But I mean, it only takes me a minute. Uh, it takes more than a minute to learn Marvelous Designer. So, Okay, I think we got them all. Cool. So back to object mode, I will add a cloth modifier back. These quality steps and so on, just really leave it alone until you are very happy with it. If you are doing a real um, cloth simulation, Those kind of settings are just for when you're really happy with the cloud sim and then when you're not experimenting with it anymore, you can increase the quality. I've uh, added a lot of frames in the simulation cache and also to the timeline so that it won't loop back to the beginning after 250 frames because we need to experiment with it a bit. So we need some time on the timeline. So now if you press this, ah, uh, wait. One more thing. I forgot to add the pin group. So the pin group, that's the vertex group that we made of those vertices that are with a hook now. And uh, those are excluded from the simulation by using it in the pin group. That way we can still manipulate those vertices. And I'll enable self collisions and uh, maybe also just uh, disable gravity to make things, to keep it simple. So now if I play this, I can grab these in object mode and with G, I can kind of move them around a bit. And you have to be careful, just use it in a subtle way because folds can easily look bad. I mean, especially if you just sculpt them from your imagination or it's best to use a reference, of course, just to find some pictures of folds or take pictures of yourself in poses so that you can maybe in the pose that you're trying to make a sculpt of and then you have a good reference of what folds would really look like in clothes but simulation is also a really good tool to do that and we can use this as a guide later to sculpt some additional clothes folds there
So just so you know, cycle around a bit through these hooks and select them one by one, move them a little bit until it looks interesting. And of course, even here it will add some faults, even though I didn't have hooks there. But because it's a clot sim, it's also reacting on the back to what we're doing. Let me just move this one up a little bit. If you don't want to accidentally select the cloth itself, you can just disable it in the outliner, which for some reason resets the simulation. So then I have to undo Oops. and play. Oh. Okay, that was not a good idea. Let me just quickly undo that. I'm just undoing it so those hooks are back in the place where they were. Let me just check that I didn't undo any settings because that happens sometimes in Blender. Okay, I'm gonna disable them right now from the start. Go back to first frame, press the spacebar and let me do that again. So you see these faults are quite interesting. I think it would be difficult to come up with this from your imagination. Okay, that's good enough. So I'll pause the simulation and I want to apply them all. But of course I cannot select and I'm afraid. Okay, nothing happened. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to make them selectable again that the cloth sim would somehow disappear. But no. Okay, so press Ctrl A and choose Visual Germany to Mesh. That just applies all the modifiers and then we have all those faults baked in. So we don't have to be afraid of the cloth sim doing something weird. Nice. Maybe let's add a subdiv modifier at this point. Or actually, let me add a multi res modifier because I will be sculpting. The draw brush is a really good, simple tool for adding faults. And let me just reduce the strength a bit because I'm, uh, I'm just sculpting with my mouse. <laughs> Not to recommend it, but uh, when you're sculpting with your mouse, of course, you don't have pressure sensitivity, so you have to kind of just set it manually. And I'm just being inspired now by the faults that were created by this simulation. Just enhancing them a little bit, adding a couple more faults to that. This will be difficult to do if you just started from zero and didn't have any simulation faults or reference or anything. You just... You would be creating unrealistic faults, really, and people can tell because they're used to seeing clothing and faults all day long. So. If you don't like something, you can just hold shift and you know erase it. Or hold control and go into the negative direction. But of course, you have to be careful not to clip through the base mesh. All right, so that's how you can get some realistic looking faults using the, well, cloud simulation and uh, some hooks. I guess we can remove this collision as well.
All right. I hope you like it. And uh, if there's any question, please just uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you. Bye.